being spoken ever since last night. Brother Roland told me that he was hearing the same thing. Brother Gray preached the same thing. Brother Johnson preached the same thing. So it's telling me that every minister who had to speak today, the Spirit of the Father has something to do with what we are saying. So I would admonish you that you would take everything seriously that he is speaking to us today. Even in the midst of a storm that our brother is going through, we need to be praying for him that he can maintain his faith with his dad. For it is truly commendable that he is spending this time at his dad's side. Hallelujah. We're going to talk today by the power of Almighty Yah. Not by Isaac, not by you, not by power, not by might, but by his spirit. And we will give him all of the praise. Father in heaven, we give this message as you give it to me. And we pray that every word penetrates the heart of the listener. That will cause us to be thankful and that our lives will change to accommodate the word that we will hear. Thank you for the word that has gone forth ever since the Rev Shabbat. Even this morning. Your word was so powerful. So whatever you do now, it's still up to you, Father. And we will give you the praise in Yahshua Hamashiach's name. By the power of your sweet name, Almighty Yah, we say hallelujah. 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 First Timothy chapter 5 is where we're going to start. There is a word that many people are basing their lives on and everybody has their own interpretation thereof. When the scripture clearly tells us that there is no private interpretation, men has made their own private interpretation to fit whatever denominational belief system they're in and to convey that thought to the world. Regardless if the father said it or not, that organization said it, so they said it must be true. I believe the only thing that is true is the word of Yah. So the scripture says, let Yah be true and every man a liar. So we need to speak what he said instead of what we want to say. First Timothy chapter 5, if you will, says in verse number 18, for the scripture says, Y'all see that, don't you? He didn't say Moses said. He didn't say Abraham said. He said the scripture said. You will not muzzle the ox that treads out the corn. The laborer is worthy of his reward. You may be seated. Our message today is, what is your reward? What is your reward? We all believe that there's a reward for those who will meet him in the time of salvation. We all have been told that he has his reward with him and that he will dispense that to us at a particularly given time. And we are waiting now for our reward. In some instances, we've heard that he said, I, I hired you for a penny. And your penny is your reward. But I don't think that we have spent enough time talking about that penny. Because even though it seems like the least amongst the monetary system, it is the most amongst the spiritual system. To receive something from him on the day of restitution and is good for you is worth more than anything that you could ever acquire on this planet. So my question to us today is, what is our reward? We have been looking hither and yon, and we have heard what the men of this country and other worlds have said, and they've been putting into people's heart that your reward is to fly in the Learjet that you own, that you can own a yacht, big house, and 
a picket fence, and two and a half children and a dog. And that's your reward on this planet. Brothers and sisters, how big of a lie that have been perpetrated in the earth. That they have taught men to believe that you got to have plenty of something in order to say that you have a reward. I don't know about y'all, but I heard him say that his reward is with him. Not in this earth. This earth is not worthy of his reward. There is nothing that man can do, nothing that man can buy, no money that he can acquire can do anything for that reward. That reward is more valuable than anything than we can even imagine. Can I get a witness? But you can be tricked out of your reward. Because the scripture says in Colossians 2, Verse number 18, let no man beguile you of your reward. So if he's telling us don't let that happen, that means it has happened. People have lost their reward because a man told them a lie and they believed it. Brothers and sisters, we should be rooted, as Minister Johnson said this morning, and grounded in the love of Almighty God that the world cannot separate us from him. That's why I heard Shaul said, I am fully persuaded that there is nothing that can separate me from the love of Yah. Can I get any agreement on that today? The Father wants us to know that he's trying his best to keep us from being puffed up because it's easy to get puffed up because of what you know. But what you know can cause you also to go to hell. Can I get a witness? Because if you puffed up, puffed up, you got pride in your heart. You're allowing your head to get too big. You're allowing your arrogance to get you too high. But I need you to understand what goes up must come down. And the father got a way of bringing you down. I don't think you want him to bring you down. Can I get a witness in here? In 1 Corinthians 3.8, he says, he plants and he waters one. And every man will receive his own reward according to his own labor. What he said right there is, I love Brother Roland, but Brother Roland can't get my reward. Hallelujah. No, no, nobody can't get your reward. Only you can get your reward. So therefore, no matter what somebody else do, it will not affect what you do. What somebody else get don't affect what you will get. Because the father is looking at you for you and looking at that person for that person. So you got to be concerned about yourself. That's why the scripture says work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. But we tend to tamper with other folk trying to fix them when we need fixing ourselves. This is the garage. We just pulled in the, the, the garage for souls. Hallelujah. And he's got something to fix on each one of these vehicles so that it can run perfectly well when it goes out there. We don't want no flat tires. We don't want no engines gunked up and can't run right. We don't want all of that stuff going on. We want to have a vehicle that can take us hither and yon and bring us back. Can I get a witness? Matthew 6, 2 says, Therefore, when you do your alms, when you do your giving, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do while they are in the synagogue. You know how people pass by when they're giving and they want you to see them putting that $20 bill in the, in the plate. They want you to see them putting that $100 bill in the plate. And sometimes they put that 100 in there and say, Give me 50 back. You know, they, they want you to see change taking place and monetary changing take place when it was one of the things that the Messiah whipped clean out of there. Now they want to bring it in there and, and gloat over what they do and look down on you for what you can't do. Oh, bless his name, somebody. Then I want you to understand, he said, these people are in the streets and giving alms. They want everybody to see. What they're doing. You know how people do that, and I'm going to take you to lunch, and I'm, I'm going to bring you some shoes, and I'm going to bring you a coat. It's getting cold now, and they want everybody to see you doing that kind of giving. But I got bad news for people like that. He said, they're getting the glory of men, 
So I'm going to tell you, they already have their reward. In other words, when you're looking at them riding around in the fancy cars and riding around Brother Roland and Brother Ross in those big pretty boats and riding around in their lead jets and, and they're wearing the best of clothes, the father said, don't worry about it. That's all they're going to get. That's all they're going to get. But I got something for you called the reward. Hallelujah. I'm, I want you to get excited about even though you haven't seen it, even though you haven't touched it, I want you to know I got something that a man can't give to you. Hallelujah. Oh, I got something for you. I got a reward for you. I, I got something that's going to bless you beyond what you've ever thought was a blessing. I, I got something that's going to outweigh everything you have ever acquired on this planet. I got it for you if you just hold on and remain faithful to the end. Oh, we, we, we want our reward, but we got to find out what our reward is. Our reward has nothing to do with what's on this planet. No, no, my father said he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. That ain't mine. He said he owned the gold and the silver. That ain't mine. He said he owned the earth and the inhabitants of the earth. None of that belong to me. But he said he got a reward for me. And somebody here know you got one coming. Because I'm going to tell you right now, everybody going to get a reward. Whether it be good or whether it be bad. You, you working for a payday. Come on, talk to me. See, you, you, you who are working righteousness, you want a righteous reward. You who are working unrighteous will get an unrighteous reward. But you're going to get paid. You're going to get paid. And, and uh, we, we look at it in Matthew 6, 5. He says, and when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites. For they love to pray standing in the synagogue. They like to pray standing on the street corner and making a lot of noise. They like to pray to be seen by men. But truly I say to you, they already got their reward. You know all the accolades. Oh, you pray so good. Oh, you made my skin tremble. Oh, you made the hair stand up on my neck. So what? That never gave you a promise just because they're praying good. Hallelujah. It's funny how Brother BJ spoke that word and it came out so clear last night. Isn't that wonderful? That's the spirit of Almighty Yah. He's moving in this house today. I don't know about you, but you ought to be glad that you're here today. You ought to understand, that's why we said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of Almighty Yah. That's why he said that. Because power is in the house. Love is in the house. Joy is in the house. Peace is in the house. Hallelujah. Praise him. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. And there is none that is worthy but him. He said, now I touched on the element of you uh, praying in the street and I done touched on the element of you giving alms in the street and everywhere. Now let me tell you something else. Let me tell you something else. When you fast, because you know people patting themselves on it, oh, I fast five days, I, I fast 20 days, I fast 40 days, I fast 60 days, I shut up. You trying to get accolades from me because you fasting? Your fasting ain't doing me no good.